your mind is so powerful. And I didn't realize it. I went to three hell weeks, ranger school, Delta Force selection, all this stuff. This incident I'm going to explain to you right now is where I realized we are only at 40% of what we are capable of. Here I am, right idea to do this race called Badwater 135. I googled the 10 hardest races in the world. What came up? Crazy race in Death Valley. Summertime, 135 miles. I knew nothing about ultra running. I thought you would like, you know, camp out, run 20 miles. Then one day, then run 20 miles again until you got 135 miles. I had no idea what I was doing. Called the race director up. He's like, hey, have you run 100 miles? I was like, what, in a week or what? What are you talking about? He's like, no, in 24 hours or less. I said, no. He goes, you got to qualify to get in this race. You have to run 100 miles in 24 hours or less. He was trying to call my bluff. I call him up on a Wednesday. He goes, hey, there's a race in San Diego on Saturday where it's a 24-hour race where you run around, you know, a track, a one-mile track for 24 hours. And if you get 100 miles, I will consider you in my race. It really helps to be smart, people. And I was not smart in this situation. I thought, oh, I did the math. It's about a 14-something mini mile. I can do that. Anyway, I show up on Saturday with the blue lawn chair, Ritz Crackers, Mileplex, and my ex-wife. And every mile I'm going to see her, I'm going to grab some Ritz Crackers and some Mileplex. I know what the hell I'm doing, but it's bliss. That whole ignorance is bliss thing. So I get to 70 miles pretty damn fast. I get to 70 miles in like 12, 13 hours. What do you think happens to your body when you haven't trained for that kind of mileage? A lot of bad things. But I thought I was in good shape. It was amazing. So I hadn't gone to the bathroom at all. I sit down. Big mistake. I sit down in this blue lawn chair. I sit down looking at my ex-wife. I'm seeing like three or four of her. I'm like, oh, oh shit. This is not good. So I'm trying to play it off because... I know where I'm about to go. So I'm sitting there, and when you haven't gone to the bathroom, you're dehydrated, your nutrition's all jacked up. You sit down, and you gotta go to the bathroom now. So I look at my ex-wife, I go, do you love me? She said, yes. Why? I go, because I want to take a shit on myself right now. Because I can't stand up, because my blood pressure's all messed up. So I'm sitting there, literally, pooping up my back, and peeing blood down my leg. She's a nurse, so she's concerned. And I'm telling you right now, there's one thing you never want to hear as a black person. She said you're starting to turn white. So I'm sitting there, and I'm all jacked up. And I'm like, okay. How in the world am I going to, I got 30 miles to go. I should quit, but I didn't. What I started doing through this whole process was I started to study myself in the dark times. So instead of just quitting real fast, I said, no, I'm going to quit, but not right now. So I sat back for a second and I said, let me get some water. Let me hydrate. Let me clean myself up a little bit. Let me get some nutrition. I wasn't dizzy. It's okay. My feet are all messed up. Let me see if I can walk. I'm going to walk one mile and then I'll go home. That would be a great accomplishment for me, 71 miles. So I took this massive thing and I started breaking it down into small chunks. And as I started breaking it down into small chunks, I started realizing maybe I'll walk one more mile. But at the pace I was walking, I wasn't going to make the time. So this is when I realized the whole 40% rule. Those of you who worry, you know, Red can't hurt me, you understand it. Basically, the 40% rule is when we have a governor on our brains, like a governor on a car. A car may say 130, but if you put a governor on a car, it can only go 101. We do the same thing to our brains. I was born with limited horizons. 
Born on the other side of the tracks. I didn't think I could be anybody. So my governor was myself. So once you take that governor off, you have limitless horizons. So here I am now, sitting in this chair, walk 75, I'm at 80 miles, but I'm not gonna make the time. The most amazing thing happens. The brain, the mind, the soul, the spirit, it all connected. It's never happened before like this in my entire life. I ran the next 19 miles. I ran about 10 minute mile. I finished 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes. I'm gonna save you how the story ends because it ends real foul. It ends in a tub with me peeing Coca-Cola out of myself. It was blood. And it was the best feeling I had in my entire life. I'm not sadistic, but when you push yourself to that level and accomplish something you thought was impossible, what happens to your body and mind is something I can't really even explain.